I'm gonna try to tell you how to counter every single weapon in Brahalla, including unarmed, in only one minute each. But before I start, three general tips to keep in mind regardless of the matchup. Mix up your dodges, don't panic, especially off stage with your jumps, and try to approach with movement first rather than your attacks. This is maybe the single most important thing to drill into your head. Change your focus from hitting your opponent to getting into zones where you can hit your opponent. Once you do that, the punishes will come much more naturally. Okay, now let's start with a very unconventional one. Yo, here's a quick message from my brother Dreg Soup. Thank you, Egg Soup. Thank you to Opera GX for paying 85.71% of my rent. That is a real number. Opera GX is a web browser built for gamers. It's also on mobile and you can connect it to the desktop version. Use the QR code on the screen to download GX Mobile. I don't, I don't know how you'd scan the QR code to download mobile if you're on mobile, but you can figure that out. They, they didn't tell me to say that, I don't know. Two points about Opera GX. Okay, it has lag and FPS drop resources, so if you have tabs open, it won't hurt your performance, hopefully. You can limit CPU or RAM usage directly through the browser, and additionally, you can limit the bandwidth it uses so games and streams don't lag, lag you out. Number two, if you want to switch your primary browser, Opera GX makes it very easy by allowing you to quick import all of your history, bookmarks, cookies, and Google Chrome extensions are compatible. Cool. Click the link if you want to. It's, it's the metric they use to see the success of this campaign. It's free and very fast. Get it if you want. Make an informed choice. Okay, I already did this one, but I pressed stop record, start record, and it's, it's missing. So I have to do this one again. Okay, Scythe, something you re really want to keep in mind is the three tips that I mentioned go extra for Scythe because they control so much space. So mix up your dodges all the time. Also, something to do is uh, you don't always have to dodge. So something that a lot of Scythe players will do is they'll bait out a dodge option, and then you'll dodge right away, and then you'll also attack right after that. This is a very, very common habit against Scythe, but against most string weapons in general. You'll dodge after one of their startup tools, and then immediately try to get back into the action, and that's how they punish you. They aren't actually reading your dodges. They're reading your wake up option right after you dodge. So be very careful about that. If you're resetting neutral, do a full reset. Don't try and like attack back right as they're in advantage and, and that's how they get a billion damage. So that's the number one key tip to keep in mind. Also with KOs, uh, avoid all the dodge setups if they have like a big string move like Mordex and Sig. Don't dodge like into that. If there's a lot of moves that, that cover a lot of dodges, learn those. Just spend some training, training mode playing them yourself. I have 10 seconds. I really want to hammer home the point that if you're dodging and taking a lot of damage from sites, make sure that you're not always dodging the same way and make sure that you're not always attacking immediately trying to get right back into the action right after you dodge. Okay, the timer's starting. I'm gonna try to do this all in one take. So unarmed, something that you really want to keep in mind is that it's extremely quick and it has really, really good wake up options. Wake up basically just means right after a hit's done, they just attack right away. So if you ever played sword, you get an end lighted out of like a sideline into an end light from unarmed. That's why. Also with scythe, you can get dared uh, out of a lot of your strings if they're in the air. And the reason for that is unarmed is faster than most weapons in the game. So always keep in mind, but they have stubby little arms. So what you could do is you could bait out Wacos by just simply outranging them. Uh, that's something that you always want to keep in mind. Oh, okay, also with KOs, Unarmed really likes to KO with recovery. Falling recoveries like this is something you always have to watch out for. And don't be too cocky because sometimes you really can't punish it. That's something to always look out for. Also, when you're in the red, oh my god, 20 seconds. Uh, and someone's just going like this, uh, always watch out for this hitbox right here because it hits way higher than you think. If you're off stage, people are often going to go for this downline to ground pound. But if they miss it, they're actually really vulnerable. So just be a little bit patient, wait it out. Uh, last thing is you can force out classes. Clashes offstage, Unarmed will always lose clashes. So if you're trying to interrupt someone's recovery, don't be afraid. Just go right for it because Unarmed will lose if you do have a weapon. And I think okay, this is going by so much faster than I thought. Lance, the main way they're going to KO you is with Sair. So always be careful with the Sair range. Always be aware. If someone's just hopping around like this, trying to bait on an option, and they're going like this, they're probably going for the Sair. If you're in red, you can kind of stay on the ground very safely because this is not going to KO you. This is not going to KO you. This is not going to KO you until really, really late. So always be careful of these falling Sairs and try not to panic jump in neutral because that's how they're going to catch you. That's how they're going to kill you really, really early. Uh, the other thing is the Lance Vortex, which is like the, the, the thing where they just go like this over and over again and then you die. You can jump out of that. So the Downer into Sair uh, is not necessarily something that you, you, can, you can have to get hit by all the time. Uh, they can mix it up though by doing a jump Sair instead, so always be careful about that. Side light into Sider is not a true combo. Always dodge after side light because if they try, try to go for side layer, side layer, then they might miss it. Also, whenever I say always, it's not necessarily an always thing because of course the context of the match matters, but I'm trying to say it really fast and now I'm wasting time anyway. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you hover above them, they're going to go for these nares, but nair has actually a lot of cooldown. I'm trying to do it as fast as possible, but I can't even do it again. So if they do nair once, you can kind of fall down on them safely and then get a punished with a down.
This is probably not helpful at all. So Katars can also kind of struggle to kill if you're not in the air. Recovery is their main kill move. So be very, very careful of anything that sets up into recovery. That's end light into recovery. That's not a recovery move. I, I don't have time to fix that. Okay, end light into, into jump recovery. If you don't have a dodge, they're going to hit that with, with end light setup. So be very, very careful of anything that can get you into that end light into recovery setup. So let's say they go for this. Don't dodge immediately down if they're just reading it, okay? If they read you before, try to mix it up. Uh, anything else? These falling recoveries, be careful though. That's not a falling recovery. Uh, cider off stage. This is a very, very big one. Off stage, don't mash jump. Do not mash jump, and if you're gonna mash jump, don't do it when you're panicking, because you will die to Katars if that happens. Uh, also, be very, very aware of immediately trying to fight back right after you get hit. This is very similar to Scythe, but Katars are even better at this because this downlight can interrupt so much. After they whiff, a lot of people are gonna go for downlight immediately. So what you can do is instead of trying to punish this first move, punish the second one instead. Also, always be aware of dash sidelight range. People are really gonna go for this dash sidelight, but you can outspace it. Right there, it's going to hit, but right here, it's not, and so you can punish that. Uh, it is a very punishable move, but be very careful by getting caught into any vortexes because you are going to catch a lot of damage. I'm going to lose my mind and my voice. Okay, the timer started. Hammer. Uh, the main thing they're obviously going to look for is downline to cider, so always be aware of that. I don't know why I said obviously. That was very snarky. I didn't mean to. Uh, off stage, hammer ground pound. This move right here, it probably will hit the wall. So don't ever think when you're safe on the wall, you're like, oh, this hammer ground pound isn't going to hit me. No, it's going to hit you. Get out of there as soon as possible. Also, hammer recovery is a move that you really don't want to contest. If someone's just hovering right here, be very, very careful about where they're positioning, especially if they're trying to go for a reverse recovery. If they're going for a reverse recovery, then they know the intricacies of hammer and because that's definitely a better option most of the time uh, so be very careful about people that are hovering for this and and don't try to contest that with options that aren't necessarily safe the other thing is you can punish hammer from a 45 degree angle so right here the, the cider this this none of these are hitting at 45 degrees so you can punch with something like a bow dare uh, an orb dare if your weapon has one of those uh, the other thing that you can do is try to land on top of them because this nair does uh, take a little time to time to send out and uh, they have to leap into the air for it uh, the other thing is try to be very careful about punishing in close quarters because this end light is very fast and can punish you going if you're just a little bit too slow. Axe, there's a couple things I want to mention. So their primary knockout tool is going to be end light on the ground. It's going to be cider in the air. So be, be very careful of those two moves when you're in red. If you avoid those well and you see someone just hovering around waiting for stairs, don't try and go for anything too, too quickly. They're going to try and bait you out and go for this stair, okay? So if you can bait out their stair first, then you're, then you're in winning position. Also, if you just space right outside of it or you try to mix them up, you cross them up. So, that, so that's something to be aware of. The second thing is that the, the downside of this, the, this recovery is always going to be the spike. A lot of people think it's kind of random, but it's not. You can position on purpose to always get that spike. So be careful of that. If you're trying to edge guard Axe, be very, very careful not only of this recovery and, and, and the blow hitbox because it's a guaranteed spike, but also the second recovery. Okay, the second recovery is always something to be aware of because it has this kind of jank movement and it can catch you on stage. The third thing to keep in mind is that sidelight is very, very punishable if you position it correct or if you position yourself correctly. So if you notice someone just whiffing these sidelights over and over again, punish them for it. Don't attack right away. Wait for them to do, do this first. Get accustomed to their rhythm and then punish these sidelights because they're going to get 30 damage each time if you don't. I'm realizing I'm saying a lot of things. I'm not necessarily telling you how to do it. That's the nature of the format. Okay, against Gauntlets, the number one thing that you want to be aware of is the same dodge timing. Now, when I say mix up your dodges, the main thing that people think about is uh, is direction. But you also want to mix up timing because something that a lot of Gauntlet players will do, they'll do something like Nair. And then they'll wait for you to dodge and then you'll always dodge with the same timing and then they'll punch it. Same with Sidelight. And this means that they can always do these kinds of setups that cover a lot of dodges very, very consistently. So what you want to do is not always dodge at the same time. Sometimes you want to do a wake up option. Sometimes you even just want to delay it by a frame or by a hair. Something that you can also do is fake direction. So if you're going this way, dodge that way. Instead, what people tend to do is when they're holding a direction, they tend to dodge in that direction every time like that. So you want to fake out. You didn't know which way I was going there, there, there unless you did. And then you're a wizard and I deserve to lose. Uh, also, something to keep in mind is gauntlets on stage definitely struggle to kill. Recovery is their main option. People are going to be floating for recoveries, always looking for these. So be very careful about putting yourself in a position where they're below you and they can do this. Uh, it is a vertical option. You can't really steer it that much. So also keep that in mind in, in terms of the range. Uh, Last thing. That is very unfortunate. Cannon, a very, very common habit that people have is always going for these stairs to recover and immediately use them as a, as an approaching tool. So always know the range of the stair. In Cannon matchup, this is something to, to really, really know. Especially if people aren't necessarily most experienced with Cannon, they always go for these stairs. And this is a very punishable move, so always be careful about that. Also, their primary KO option is Downlight into Nair, but Downlight is also a punishable move. Be very careful with this hitbox. If I can do this in time, uh, the Jiro is going to jump. It's still going to hit in the air there, so it is very, very good, but that also means that it's a punchable move, so uh, be careful about that. Uh, the other thing is 
cannon vortex. Uh, dodging up against cannon is often very, very good, or in upward direction, jumping uh, above cannon, because that stops them from getting like the dare resets into 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 end lights, into side lights, into recoveries, and all that. Also, if you're playing against a character with a lot of decks like Lin Fei, you might not be able to escape some of these, so be very careful about that. Know the character matchup, not necessarily weapon matchup as well, uh, because cannon has a lot of specialists. You know, Lin Fei is a very special character. Zul is a very specialist character. Last thing is that after whiff, a lot of people will go for these ground pounds. This has actually has a very good hitbox, so you don't necessarily want to contest that all the time. Punish it afterwards, not Sword is extremely well-rounded. Something that you always want to be careful about is getting Nair juggled. Something that a lot of people do is they get really antsy and they wake up attack over and over and over again while they're getting juggled, but this Nair hitbox is insanely good and can rack up damage before you even know it, so be very careful about that. Uh, recovery is their primary KO move, so be, be very aware. Also, downlight uh, on the ground. I mean, Sword is just one of the best weapons of KO. Uh, side light. Side light is always something to be aware of. People often approach with this side light primarily, and that's also... Uh, it, it is punishable as, as long as you have range. It is very difficult, though. It is also a super fast move. Uh, off stage, don't mash jump because dare into, a, dare into just... The, the ground pound over and over again uh, is just something that catches you all the time if you're not aware of it so be careful about that uh, especially lower level players tend to get hit by that a lot as you get into higher level people will stop going for it but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch out for it because the unexpected thing even if it's not necessarily optimal will always uh, will often work I shouldn't say always uh, also be careful about any uh, any falling stairs there's two hitboxes to this sword stair so the second hitbox can still hit even if the first one misses be very very careful about that because even if you think you're outspacing it it might still be active don't try to punish it too early I've had that happen so Okay, great sword. A very, very common great sword trap is they'll whiff and then they'll spot dodge immediately and then just punish you for that. So if you notice a player tends to spot dodge a lot, be very, very careful. Wait and then punish the spot dodge. So something that you can do, something to, 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 to keep that in mind, is instead of going for like a falling aerial, that's often when they'll spot dodge, land on the ground first. So instead of this stair, right? Land on the ground and then side light. And that'll punish the spot dodge. That's a little timing timing mix up thing. Uh, the other thing is recovery has a lot of startup. So off stage you can kind of shark it out. Let's say if they they only have recovery left, go for an attack way earlier than you think and it's probably going to work. Dodging outside of great sword and, and, and Punishing, of course, is that that's something that you got to mix up your dodges a lot. Same thing I said with Scythe. Don't always try to be attack happy right away. That can really get you punished. If you find the right timing for it, of course, go for it. But otherwise, if you're getting hit for it, then try to mix up your timing in the middle of the match. Last thing is that a lot of the common strings that kill really early like that is jumpable. So if you jump outside of that, you can't escape it. In which case, the, the great sword player will have to go for like this, I think. Uh, I'm not, yeah, that's that's the one. Uh, and that kills a lot later. So if you jump out of strings, you're forcing the great sword player to use alternate strings that kill way, way later than they would otherwise. Also to be Okay, against Orb, it can be very easy to get caught into their rhythm if they're doing something like this, and they're just covering all their wisps with other moves, especially down air into stair. This is a very common one. If you're off stage, people go for down air stair, down air stair. So if you notice a player going for this rhythm, then punish it afterwards. Don't always go for the punish if you don't think you can get it. Punish the second move. This is a very common thing that, that, that can help a lot of people out. A uh, side light into stair is the, the most common kill move, and stair in general is what people are going to be landing with. Stair hitbox is incredible. This is going to hit you below you. This is going to hit above you. This is going to hit to the side. Try not to get tilted by the stair because it, 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 it's just going to hit you. The last thing is that down air has a lot of cool. So if you're trying to recover against them, uh, ground pound also ha ha just kind of keeps you stuck stuck for a really long time. So if you're trying to recover against orb, recovering directly below, if you don't think they're going to go for a ground pound, or if you're in a range where you can either react to the start of the ground pound, or if they're they're on cooldown for ground pound, they're in recovery, they don't think it's worth to go for whatever. Force out those options because down air it, it is pretty easy to hit if they're just recovering the same angle every time. But directly below, this is not going to hit, right? So this is not going to hit. The other thing is you can shark them the same way. If you're directly below them, this down air is going to be very difficult to hit. Just Blasters, of course, have the dead zone, so they're not going to hit right here. The, you know, the silence not going to hit right here. So what a lot of people will do is try to overshoot and then go around you. This is a very common thing that, that gun players do is they'll they'll go around you in circles like this, and then every time you try and approach them, they're just going to go to the opposite direction uh, and then try to hit through the dead zones. This is a very common way that people try and circumvent that issue. But what you do is preemptively hit where they're going to go. So if you know someone is trying to hit like a down air and they they can't hit it right here, so they're going to overshoot and then try to hit behind like that, you can immediately attack this zone right here. So that's something to be, be aware of. Uh, also. Also, Blaster's Recovery is a move that oftentimes you're very, very tempted to punish it, but you're not actually in a position where you can, and then that just gets you down there to get you, gets you stared. Be very, very aware of your movement, and if you're going for a Blaster's Punish or a Blaster's Recovery Punish, make sure that you're not yourself going to get punished for going for it, because oftentimes they can steer out of the way and it's very safe, uh, all that kind of stuff. Last thing is that Downlight Recovery is very, very scary, so always be aware of Downlight Ranges and, and when, when you can hit, hit, you get hit by it. Uh, downlight is one of the moves with the biggest reward on Blaster's, so uh, even though you want to be in their zone, always be careful about that, okay? Um, back to Poe. Okay, Spear really, really struggles to KO on the ground because Side Light and End Light both will pretty much never in a real match kill uh, on the ground unless you like steal someone's jumps. So, Downlight into Cider is their primary kill option. Always be aware of down Downlight into Cider when you're in red. When you're red against Spear, not jumping and not panic jumping is one of the most important things you can do because then it kind of forces them to go for like Falling Surge, which is more risky, or Ground Pounds, which is more risky. That's the other thing. Ground Pound 
always be careful about ground pound. Don't lock yourself into frames. That means lock yourself into moves without thinking because you will just get punished by this move. Also, spot dodging it on reaction is something that you can practice is very good. Uh, also, always be aware of this nair. This nair is super good. Uh, when people are, when they're just hovering above you, what you can do is practice baiting out and understanding the range of recoveries because if someone is just throwing out these recoveries really nilly, you can GC downlight recovery on a lot of weapons like, like sword or like even unarmed and get a very, very early kill because people are going to be really hunting for those. Uh, last thing is signatures are a really big deal on a lot of spear characters especially someone like Wushong, so be careful of those ranges as well. Uh, you can contest this ground pound by hitting the head directly below, but be I'm already on bow. Okay, so something that a lot of people like to do on bow is if you're standing right here in neutral, they'll dash back and then they'll go for the side light. So they'll be in a place, you'll try to punish them where they are, and then they'll back up in side light. So always be, be always be aware of that, especially if this is something that you've noticed your opponent is doing. This kind of backup, what you can do is overshoot your movement and overshoot your attack, and that either A, forces them to back up all the way until there's no more stage, or you get a punish where they're going for this and then they're just hitting a ghost. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, recovery is their primary KO tool. Downlight into recovery is the main kill combo. So always be careful about this downlight range. If you notice you're in the red and your opponent's kind of spacing now, you know, you kind of know what they're going for. They're probably going for this down recovery, so be very careful about that. Uh, off stage, bow has a lot of options, but each option has cooldown. So if they just hit you with the Sair, they can't hit you with the Sair again right away. Uh, same, same goes for down air. And ground pound is the most threatening move. So always be aware of the most threatening move. Uh, nair juggles, always be careful about that. You can dodge out of this. This is not a guaranteed combo. Dodging up is usually good, but you know, all, anything that's usually good, if they read it, it's not great. Uh, you can do a GC as well, like a GC wake up immediately to punish this down light, uh, but you just be very- Battle boots. Okay, that was a complete mess, but I hope at least one tip in there was helpful. Of course, I missed a lot because I'm, I'm just going on speedrun mode, and that's fun.